We are here above Block 21 East. What's the, the place called? Hmm? What's the place? Slow it. <laughs> on the Hunter's Field Narrow Canal. We think that's Beside how it's pronounced. Some sort of an engine slash musical instrument. Good job we didn't want to sleep in this morning. We're supposed yeah. to be leaving at 7, but Michael disappeared for half an hour, so it's now 7.30. I disappeared for half an hour to open the two locks in front of us so that we've got, you know, an easy The other one must have been miles away. It is, like, not miles away, it's a distance away. You and I had to wait was, till it opened all the way. You said it was right no, there. No complaining about me. I have been getting work done. You've been eventually walking the dog. I've been waiting for you. That's what I, when I arrive back, though, the chimney comes off and everything's ready. I've been, I've been waiting for you for like half an hour. No, it's only half an hour. Anyway, I opened the locks. You're the such locks a lock hero. Course. I'm a lock hero. We need to find a. I can't uh, believe I got complained dead for being a lock hero. <laughs> we need to find a hand spike for the Calder and Hebel today. Some people have told us on Twitter that you can buy them from the marina at Huddersfield. Excellent. So fingers crossed. So Huddersfield's where we're going. Yeah. We got 21 locks to go. We might go further than that depending on what time we get there, but actually I think this is a full full, full six it's day. Full day. Uh -huh. So first we have to get a hand spike, which means we have to get 20 locks that way, which means we have to go away from this thing that's causing me to think my heartbeat is failing. All right, let's get going. All right, let's go. Into the first lock, which has been expertly prepared by Michael. This is actually a newly built lock, moved from its original location when the canal was reopened in 2001. Here is where lock 21E was originally located. This is the lock that Michael disappeared to prepare this morning. Unfortunately, the gate has since swung shut and a little of the water has leaked out. So despite his efforts, it's not ready and waiting and I have to raise the pedal once more so that the gate can be reopened. This bridge is another modification when the canal was restored. Originally there was a swing bridge here. I'm not actually sure of the correct name for this lock. I've seen it called can lock and cast lock and car lock. When we're traveling downhill, Michael will often get off the boat and open one of the paddles to drain the lock. This is a huge help as it can get very tiring, especially on days like today when we're attempting 21 locks. I'll always wait till he's back on the boat before I open the second paddle, as otherwise I worry that the boat will descend too fast and he'll have to climb down the ladder. Which is fine, it just comes with slightly more risk than simply stepping back onto the boat.
This is the grand looking Titanic Mill building. It was built in 1912, but has since been converted into modern apartments. Here's another view of the Titanic Mill building. You can see why it got its name. The label on that paddle indicates that it's not working. Unfortunately, this has been a common sight on the locks along here. When only one of the paddle works, the lock takes twice as long to drain. Those wooden posts mark where there's been a small landslide into the canal. You can see the debris in the water and just how shallow it is there. And then along here there's been a lot of reed growth making the channel incredibly narrow. Luckily there doesn't seem to be any other boats on the move today. This is the site of yet another mill, Ramsden Mill. These two locks are very close together, so I've been able to walk ahead and set the next one. When we travel uphill, I'll often leave Michael to shock the lock gate behind him when he leaves the lock, but travelling downhill it's much harder to do this as it means him using the ladder to climb in and out of the lock chamber. We're only three miles from Huddersfield here, but we still have 12 more locks to do along the way. Here we cross the River Cone on the Goldcar Aqueduct, which underwent substantial restoration before the canal could be reopened. Apparently it used to be called Scarbottom Aqueduct. The mine boggles at that name. Here we're passing through Milnes Bridge. I can only assume that its name is derived from a mill and a bridge that were located here. Michael is delighted to have to go down to the weed hatch to clear the prop. Don't worry, we collected the plastic he removed and took it to the bins. More mill buildings converted into apartments here. I wonder how many mills lined the Huddersfield Canal a hundred or so years ago.
We always try and make sure George is safe when we go through locks, so we secure him to a tree or a bench, and when there isn't either of those, the poor puppy ends up on a mooring bollard. More old mills, these are the Britannia Mill buildings. Waiting to go into the next lock, we're actually on the Paddock Foot Aqueduct which crosses the River Colne again. And above us is the Springwood Railway Viaduct, high up on those brick pillars. When the canal was restored and reopened in 2001 there was a tunnel here as the canal needed to pass under the site of an engineering yard. The yard was then relocated to a new site to allow for some waterfront development. Once that had happened the canal was returned to the surface level but the width of the canal was kept the same as the width of the tunnel which is why it's so narrow along here. The canal widens above the lock and we're a little naughty here. There's a little just up the hill, so while Michael waits with the boat, I do a quick grocery run. You shouldn't really wait on the lock landing, but we haven't seen a single boat all day and Michael's on hand to help if any boats do happen to come along. In the end, we don't cause any problems as no other boats turn up and our boat is now full of goodies from the little bakery, so it was well worth the risk. There's no towpath access to the next lock, so George and I jump aboard here. There's actually no public access to this lock at all unless you arrive by boat, which means it feels a little eerie and deserted. No gongoozlers here, ever. On leaving the lock we immediately travel through Bates Tunnel and then we pass through a very deep cutting that's lined with metal sidings. The bars above are bracing the sides to prevent movement of the walls. It's quite a unique section of canal. Finally into the last lock of the day. As we leave the lock we're leaving the Huddersfield Narrow Canal. I know I've said this before about other waterways, but the Huddersfield Narrow Canal is honestly my new favourite. Admittedly there are a lot of locks, 74 in just 20 miles but the scenery and the towns and the history and the engineering make it well worth the effort. So we are now officially on the Huddersfield Broad Canal. We stop at Aspley Marina as planned to pick up the handspike for the Calder and Hebel navigation. They're incredibly friendly and helpful and we top up with diesel while we're here too.
then it's round the corner to find a mooring for the night. Okay, it's recording. We're in Huddersfield. And I have to physically blank out some sound from a massive construction site we're moored up beside. <laughs> there weren't many mooring options. No, basically this is the only mooring option. Immediately to our side, um, starboard side, is a big hoarding type fence that says construction on it and then behind it is just like big flat area that a bunch of dump trucks and graders and everything are working on and there's guys generators. assembling some big steel thing and generators running. So it is bleeding loud over here. And just on this side is a Sainsbury, so my club is about to get his backpack and go over there and get us some food. Yes. That's good cruise. 21 locks. 21 locks. We were going to go for 30, but, but we, did. we didn't. <laughs> We've um, basically now got three days, four day, we've got four days, and there's 13 hours, 15 minutes of cruising left to do. Yeah. But 26 locks, I think. Yeah. Quite a bit. And we had to get a Calder and Hebel hand spike got to that. do that, so we got that. So I got a big lump of hardwood, which is also useful for getting rid of miscreants. <laughs> we were told that there would be miscreants in Huddersfield. Um, that's one funny. of our visitor, one of our viewers, stopped by yesterday and said yeah. hello, and was like. They told us not to moor between here and the place we moored yesterday. What was it called? I can't remember the name. Oh, so, yes. not Slawit. Yeah, we passed through Slawit. Yeah. And he said not to moor in this area. Between Slawit and here. Between Slawit and Huddersfield, and we but got to that area really and we fine. were like, it's perfectly fine. And like, we have just been told not to moor between here and Lock Four and the Broad Canal. <laughs> So we've been like, oh, okay, we'll stop here then. Yeah. But I think we were just looking for an excuse to stop. It is funny that the number of times we get told to not stop in some beep hole, it seems to be like old knowledge. Yeah. Because the whole of Huddersfield has been largely university buildings and yeah. children. Yeah. And, you know. Oh, George, at one of the locks, was it lock three? <laughs> he got mobbed by these oh, like, yeah. five year olds. They, they were just like, can we, can we stroke him? Yeah, sure. All at once, several of us in multiple directions, and George just had this look on his face like, what did you do? He was not happy. No. But he got to meet a whole pastel of nice kids and stuff, and we were watched by like an entire preschool full of children. <laughs> and um, it was really nice, and, really nice cruise. Yeah. I just, I wish we didn't have the time pressure of the, um, of the stoppages, the winter stoppages, which, like, you know, fair enough, it's our own pressure because we could have stopped the others, you know, we could just get stopped by them and just wait it out, but... But that is boring. Yeah, and we didn't want to feel trapped. At least once we get past these ones, there are lots of options available mm -hmm. for us to then decide not to move for a good... There's an ocean. Five months. <laughs> Anything else to say? No, it was a good trip down. Um, you know, a bunch of locks, a couple tunnels. That's interesting. Probably. Nothing particularly unusual about any of the locks or anything. No, there was quite a few where one of the paddles didn't work, so there was a lot of slow ones. And they were just far enough apart that it didn't make sense to walk ahead and set them and walk back for a lot of them, so that made it slow. Um, yeah, and as we came into Huddersfield, it's just the architecture, I really like it. Like all the old industrial buildings and stuff. Yeah, and I like the new university setup. There's a place called the Lockside Building. <laughs> Computer engineering and precision machining. Okay, that sounds cool. Precision yeah, the, technology. The canal literally comes through the center of the campus. Yeah. yeah. But tomorrow we will be getting up right and early to go up the Huddersfield wide as fast as we can. And then onto the Calder and Hebel. And they're very short locks. And I've just read a blog about how difficult they are that someone sent us. <laughs> it's like, read this blog. Oh, yeah, no, I don't want to know about the, yeah. how hard it's going to be. Don't tell us about how bad it is until we're. we're We've there. got four days and it's a 13 hour trip, so it's no problem. Yeah. But yeah, we would like to beat the rain. So, yeah. Yeah, because otherwise we get stuck between flood blocks. So hopefully that doesn't happen. So, thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up, comment down below. Subscribe if you want to get more of these things. You get the notification button as well. None of that made sense, but whatever. You know, you know the drive. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. <laughs> Clicky the button. with me.
Actually needs to get going at some point. Is that thing up and yeah. Is it up? Is it is it going? You sure? It's recording. Okay, it's recording.